Hi class, in this screencast we're going to look more closely at that level of the biosphere called the community, which remember the community is many populations in one area at one time. And you can imagine that those populations are interacting with each other and they rely on each other uh, for survival. So in this screencast we're going to look more at how do these various species actually interact with one another in order to survive and reproduce. Well, two big words that are happening in a community are cooperation and competition. So I'm sure you've heard some of these terms before in everyday life. We're going to specifically apply them to ecology. So cooperation is the process of working or acting together. And in animals, uh, it's usually between relatives. And I want you to think about why this is and jot down a reason in your notes. Try not to look it up. Try to think about it. Um, you know, we've studied evolution. We've studied a lot of things this year. I think this is a question you would be able to answer. Why do relatives want to cooperate with each other? And then competition is also a very vital part of the community and a, and a part of the biosphere. So this is any contest between organisms for territory and niche, resources and goods, for mates, for group or social status, or even for leadership. And so these are uh, two, two males uh, competing probably for a mate is what that looks like. So both cooperation and competition are very important. And this interrelationship and this interdependence um, can actually generate ecosystems that are stable for thousands of years. So even though you think of competition as being a bad thing, it can actually be a very good thing. It keeps the ecosystem stable and any human interference into this uh, can definitely uh, tip the balance in one way or the other, uh, maybe for a negative, actually. So humans should try to stay out of it, right? All right, so we're going to look at different types of interrelationships. Inter the first one is predation, which is where a predator, which is the hunter, feeds on its prey, which is the organism that is being attacked. And so, so I have some really visual pictures here. Normally, we think of this when we think of a predator, right? Um, a tiger feeding on, on a, a, a deer or something. Well, um, there's also other types of predators. We have insects that are predators. We have snakes that are predators. So. There's also something very important about this predator-prey relationship, and that's when we look at the population growth. It's called predator-prey dynamics. And what we notice when we look at the prey population in black and the predator population in red is that the prey population peaks at a given time, and then a little bit later, the predator population peaks. And likewise, the prey population dips back down, and then a little bit later, the predator population dips back down. So my question to you is, why is this? Why does that predator population seem to mimic exactly the prey population, but after a little bit of a delay? Uh, a real life example of this is the snowshoe hare, which is the prey of the lynx. And this is well studied, and this is thousands of hares over here, and this is amount of time. And again, you see this cyclical nature of population size, but what you notice is once the prey population peaks, the predator population peaks a little bit after that. So jot down in your notes why you think that is. Maybe additionally think about why it is cyclical. Why does it look like that? Okay, the broadest type of interaction is called symbiosis, which is any long-term interaction between two different species. So this is any interaction. It could be good or it could be bad. Uh, the best example of symbiosis is the sea anemone and the clownfish. Now there are three types of symbiosis, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. So again, symbiosis is the overall vocabulary word, and then there are three types of symbiosis. So let's look at mutualism. This is when two organisms of different species interact and each individual benefits. So it's a mutual benefit, that's how I remember it. And a good example here is the ox build, I'm sorry, the red billed ox pecker eats ticks on the impala's coat. So here we have got a little bird and it's eating ticks off of this animal's coat. They both benefit. How do they both benefit? Well, the bird gets food and then that animal stays clean. So that's a mutualistic relationship. In your notes, I want you to come up with one more example of mutualism in nature and you can certainly look that up. The next type of symbiosis is commensalism. This is the relationship where one organism benefits, but the other one is actually not affected at all. So it's not affected positively, it's not affected negatively, it's as if nothing's even happening to that organism. Uh, this is a little bit harder to come up with an example for. An example of commensalism is cattle and cattle egrets. So as the cattle feed, they actually stir up insects uh, in their field, and then these little birds actually come and they eat the insects. 
So it's commensalism because the bird benefits, it gets the insects, it gets to eat, and then the cattle are really not affected at all by this at all. So that's commensalism. And the last one, oh, I'm sorry, come up with in your notes one more example of commensalism in nature. Again, you can look that up. We're going to share this as a group when we come back to class. And the last one is parasitism. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've heard of a parasite before. Uh, two, which is a relationship where one organism, the parasite, is going to benefit at the expense of the other organism, which is called the host. So there are two types of parasites. One is an ectoparasite, which lives on the outside of the host. Here's a beautiful image of human head lice feeding on humans. So again, that's the parasite that's living on the host. The host is harmed. So that's a really important part of parasitism. The host is harmed by this relationship. And the other type is an endoparasite, which lives inside the host. And this is a type of organism that lives in human blood vessels. So hopefully you never get that. Uh, but again, why is it parasitism? Because this guy benefits by hurting the host, and the host is harmed by the parasite. So this was a short and sweet screencast. I just have a few questions for you. Um, again, please write in one more example of parasitism in your notes so we can go over them in class and answer these two short questions. Explain how seed dispersal by animals is an example of mutualism in some cases. And then I want you to draw in this table in your notes and fill in this column and this column. So these are the types of interactions we just went over. And this tells you the effect of each species. So this would be a beneficial effect for one, and the other one would be harmed. Um, and then give me an, an example uh, of each. So fill out as much of that as you can.